Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Tesla stock back in action up over 3% today. Today was a beautiful day for Tesla, for the markets, for the equal weighted S&P, for the non-equal weighted S&P, the headline ETF for the S&P and NASDAQ, both soared, IWM soared. It was overall a fantastic day. No matter where you're invested in markets, it seems like everyone made money. Now here in this video, I wanna share with you my perspective on Tesla and markets and what is coming next. We will take a brief look at what we are getting next week that can and will be important as stocks are at all time highs and Tesla's right at about $250 per share. All of this comes together full circle, could either help or hurt Tesla stock. And I will say right off the bat, following yesterday's big decline of over 8% in Tesla, this is a classic definition of why you do not want to try to trade your entire Tesla position. I know a lot of people were doing this, maybe sold Tesla in the 230s, and now it's back to the 250s, and maybe you're buying back in. I think it's best to just set it, forget it, let it be. Using options markets from time to time to take advantage of when you think upside is coming or downside is coming is by far my preferred method of trying to get that outsized return on Tesla or protect for the downside but that's not financial advice and honestly I think buying the stock right now makes a lot of sense and I will preference this by saying I still think Tesla reaches new all-time highs by the end of this year it looks like the RoboTaxi event is going to be postponed to October although we have not had Tesla or Elon officially confirm this and I don't think we're going to get confirmation until July 23rd but it is possible anytime now Elon could come out and say yeah guys we're doing the RoboTaxi event on August 8th, or we may not get that. Apparently, per Bloomberg, the reason Tesla is delaying this event to October is, quote, because design teams were told to rework certain elements of the car. So it seems like it's more of a design issue than a software issue, which is obviously good. And as I said before, the only thing that really matters with this RoboTaxi event, what's going to cause Tesla to go to new all-time highs is the guidance behind when do we get the RoboTax event. People don't care, or markets don't care, I should say, if we launch in one city or 50 cities. Obviously, that would make, you know, a difference. But in terms of Tesla stock, you just want to know when is it going to launch? That is what is going to help drive Tesla stock to new all-time highs because let's be honest, a lot of big money, they're not even talking about Tesla's AI business. The main focus has been on cars. Now it's on energy and AI. You can see, I mean, that initial drop was about 8%, but look, we're back. We're coming back. That, that just tells me a lot of this rally has really not been based on Tesla's AI prospects. I think there's still a lot of upside left there, and I don't think a lot of upside's priced in from AI. Now, the kryptonite to Tesla, and let me just be honest with you, is the economy is a potential recession. Whether that affects Tesla or not, recession and Tesla are perceived to go hand in hand. So if the economy looks like it's going into recession over the next month, two, three months, six months, doesn't matter when, to be quite frank with you, that is going to negatively impact Tesla. Now, if the AI starts to become more of a larger consideration for Tesla, if we do get to October and Tesla's optimistic about launching the RoboTaxi, let's say in 2025, for an example, then I think the economy will take a little bit more of a back burner towards Tesla specifically. But autos in general, they are seen as very sensitive two recessions. And that is, from this perspective, the kryptonite for Tesla. We know rates are going to fall. We know you know, things are underlooked with Tesla, but it comes down to the economy. And if you are someone that thinks the economy is going to weaken dramatically, we're going to have an 08 kind of scenario again. At some point, Tesla will fall based on that. Now, I think it's far too soon to say how bad the economy is going to get. We can confidently say at best, the economy is flatlined here. At worst, the economy is actually going into contraction now or over the next couple of months. But it's far too late to say we're gonna have some kind of deep recession. And I think some kind of shallow recession is not a big deal for Tesla. But again, that initial fear could be bad news. So you really wanna watch economic data and economic activity. 
We'll talk about the lineup for next week's Economic Catalyst in just a moment. We have Powell, we have retail sales, all kinds of things coming out next week. But that's the biggest material downside risk to Tesla and really the markets at this point. Now, it's worth remembering that Tesla broke its multi-year downtrend. Now, from a technical standpoint, that usually leads to new all-time highs. So me forecasting all-time highs by the end of this year is a pretty easy call with, with when you actually look at the technicals, which Tesla tends to react off the technicals precisely, almost down to a science, the technicals work on Tesla, uh, unlike any other stock I've, I've ever seen or studied in the markets, and I've been around quite a while. But that also suggests that Tesla's likely on an upwards path and headed to new all-time highs at least over the next 6 to 12 months. Now, I think in the very near term for Tesla, there are some great things going for us as well, even when the RoboTaxi event, or now as the RoboTaxi event, has been delayed. I made a whole video on that. I, I, I don't want to kind of rehash everything, but long story short, I would much rather have a good event than a bad event, but just have the good event be delayed two months than have a bad event that is, you know, too soon, let's say August 8th, and the stock just plummets on that event, right? I would rather it take a little bit more time and to get a good event that really does send the stock to new all-time highs, and I think that is going to be um, the catalyst to do it. And that's why I changed my forecast for new all-time highs by October to the end of the year, because I think it's going to take 30 to 60 days after the RoboTax event to get that momentum in there, to get shorts to start covering, to get that FOMO coming back in, and to get Tesla stock to new all-time highs. In a best case scenario, Tesla stock could rally to a $2 trillion market cap if things are really exciting um, on the RoboTaxi day, and that would send Tesla stock to about $625 per share or so, but at least all-time highs would make sense. Now, coming on earnings, I think the next big thing markets are going to be excited with is the new products that are going to be unveiled. We know Tesla's going to beat on profitability. Free cash flow is going to be great. It really comes down to the commentary that we get from Tesla and if we get those new models that are unveiled. At Tesla's shareholder um, meeting, there was that image of three different vehicles with like blank not blankets but like tarps on them right we kind of have an idea of maybe what to expect there's some kind of like suv type minivan thing there's there's uh you know two other like car like sedans right so if we get those unveiled and timelines for production on those that's going to be the next big thing to kick tesla stock up higher and i think that's enough to get us probably to about 300 $320 per share before the rubble taxi event. So that's kind of my expectation for Tesla between now and really the end of this year. I, I think there's also things you need to consider with the economy and the state of our markets that is also important. I think a lot of people have forgotten that actually earnings are the biggest driver of stocks. Now, earnings have basically went straight up. Earnings, ex well, expectations, that is. Earnings have went up, but it's really the expectations for um, the next coming quarters that has went straight up. And so far, what we've gotten out of the banks this morning not great, kind of a mixed bag, but even big names like JP Morgan missed on profitability, missed, missed on EPS by over a dollar. Pepsi missed, that stock got destroyed. Delta missed, that stock got destroyed, um, you know, relatively speaking. So I think there is a bigger risk to this market around earnings than the markets are currently discounting. And what, the, what that means really in English is I think earnings are not going to impress. I find it hard to believe that Apple's going to really impress investors at $232 per share, that NVIDIA is going to massively impress investors at almost all-time highs. Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Meta, and, and, and really all of these companies, it's going to be hard to impress investors. And any miss, any you know margin miss, anything's going to be scrutinized. And I think there's a much greater risk that Apple could fall 15 or $20 from here, then go up another 15 or $20 from here. So I think earnings is a big risk that we will just be facing over the next, you know, coming weeks, really over the next month or so, we're going to be facing big tech earnings, large company earnings that will put the pressure on markets. Because let's be honest, it's an election year. There's election risk that hasn't been priced into our markets. Any day now you could see 
you know, young Biden step down. And I think that could be a black swan event or gray swan event in and of itself. That's not priced into markets. The fact that earnings expectations have done nothing but go straight up for the last six months. It's not priced into markets. You know, expectations are not reality. We just had CPI come in really low yesterday. We had PPI that came in really high today. What does that do? That means corporate profits are potentially being squeezed. Companies like Pepsi that that, that said just yesterday, they can't pass on cost anymore to consumers. People are only willing to pay $5 for a bag of Doritos. That's what that, that's literally what Pepsi said. Their costs are going up. They can't pass those costs on to consumers. What happens? You get margins that are pressured. And on the aggregate, when you get PPI, producer prices going up, consumer prices not going up, that just means in aggregate, companies cannot pass that cost on to consumers. That weighs on company margins. I do think in the near term, there is an unbalanced risk out there where there is this risk that earnings are not as great as we think that maybe expectations for 2025 EPS growth come from, you know, 15% where they are today down to 10% or down to 13% following this quarter. And that could create a five to 7% pullback in markets very easy. And we're not priced for that as stocks hit all time highs today. So there is an imbalance of risk. I see the risk much more to the downside at this point than to the upside in the broader markets. Now, of course, it's gonna be a stock by stock, sector by sector, you know, kind of deal here. PayPal may do great, Apple may do poorly, and you know, just because Apple does poorly doesn't mean PayPal has to do poorly, right? It's gonna be a whack-a-mole this whole earnings season that could drive markets at least somewhat lower. And then I also think as you are heading out of seasonally the best period of the year, which is the first half of July, and we head into the second half of July coming next week, that's also a risk that you need to keep your eyes on. These last two weeks have been fantastic for broader markets but it is seasonally the best two weeks of the year for any year. It's better than the Santa Claus rally. It's better than the start of the year. First two weeks in July are the most bullish period. Second half of July is one of the worst periods for markets and August tends to be a bit of a mixed bag. Now there is this election risk as well. The best case scenario is gridlock. We obviously won't know what, you know, will happen until the election itself, but the markets tend to price that risk in ahead of time. That's why September and October tend to be pretty rough months for markets during election years. It wouldn't surprise me if some of that risk starts to get priced in second half of July in August, just because we already know like, hey, September, October is usually a pretty rough period for markets. It wouldn't surprise me if the markets, knowing that, price it in a little bit ahead of time. And I do think that is a little bit of a risk for broader markets as well. A lot of people on Wall Street have said this recent rally in small caps, your equally weighted S&P, has been a bit of a short squeeze and it may not be durable to continue for a while. Which, if you do take a look at RSP, this is the ticker symbol for Invesco's um, ETF for the Ecoway S&P 500. You were sitting at short interest of 7.5% um, right before this um, CPI report came out. Now, this had ha has risen from about 5% in April up to 7%. So there was definitely a lot of crowded shorts in the Ecoway the trade really was short equal weight, long mag seven. Now that was kind of the trade that everyone was doing or, you know, combination of short equal weight S&P, short Russell, long mag seven. Well, even now you can see the short interest is 6.79%. So there has been some short coverings um, in just the last, you know, couple of days, short interest almost falling about 1%. So I think that could be a valid point that some of this rally we are seeing could be short covering. And if that short covering does stop, if we get a little bit of a pause, it is possible you may not see that rotation back into that same trade, meaning you may not see the concentration go into buying mag seven short the rest of the markets. It may go into a little bit of buying here, buying there, and maybe we get that overall trend of mag seven outperformance that kind of comes to a bit of a stop. Now, Monday, we are going to get banks like Goldman Sachs. We get BlackRock, not necessarily a bank. 
uh, Guarantee, First Service, all kinds of different banks are going to be spread throughout this week. But you are going to get Interactive Brokers, Tuesday and After Hours, J.B. Hunt. That's important for the whole transportation, kind of how strong is the economy doing. J.B. Hunt's important for that. Wednesday, ASML. That's important for your AI trade. Johnson & Johnson, Ally, U.S. Bank Corp. Uh, Wednesday, you have United, Alcoa, Discover, Kinder Morgan, and others. Thursday pre-market, you have TSMC. That's probably the best insight we can get to NVIDIA because TSMC does a vast majority of NVIDIA's manufacturing. So if TSMC reports good or bad earnings, that's obviously going to be impactful for the broader markets. Then you have Netflix, Thursday after hours, a um, couple other names. And then Friday, you have American Express. I will point out Discover and American Express, they will kind of give us an insight to how the consumer is spending money and any of that will be important but it's all about ai next week asml tsmc those are the two most important companies netflix is obviously important for your tech trade as well but it's all about ai next week and i think expectations are still a little bit on the high side and what you're actually seeing right now is nvidia's eps estimates for this quarter are actually coming down we haven't seen that in a long time where nvidia's estimates are falling into their earnings. Most of the time, all of the time, you actually see estimates rise heading into NVIDIA earnings. So you can actually see here, 30 days ago, the EPS estimate for NVIDIA's current quarter was 63 cents. Today it's 59 cents. So you've actually seen some pressure on NVIDIA's estimates heading into this quarter earnings. Now, you haven't really seen this with your other big tech stocks. Their estimates have risen, and that just raises the bar that they could miss. Or even if they don't miss, they could maybe give us a little bit of a disappointment. Of course, I think betting against big tech is usually a bad idea, but given we are at all-time highs, I see it a risk for markets, I see it a risk for Tesla, and really everything. If, let's say, your AI trade doesn't impress or apple microsoft google amazon collectively do not impress that would be problematic and i i i don't know if the broadening trade will hold up in that kind of market environment now does that lead to an ultimate collapse probably not could that lead to a 10 percent correction probably a lot of people forget 10 percent corrections are healthy they're normal they happen. They're supposed to happen. Just we haven't seen one in a long time. So people have forgotten that corrections are a part of markets. And actually, during an election year, you get on average a 13 percent pullback. Some years more, some years less. But that's the average. And we haven't even come close to that. The most we got was a 6 percent drawdown in the S&P back in April after last quarter earnings. So could you get another pullback? Following this quarter earnings, probably. After all, if you take a look at just the S&P arbitrarily, from the high of last quarter to where we are today, you're up 7.5%. <laughs> I mean, from the low of last quarter, you're up, what, 14.5%? You're telling me there's no chance of a correction here? There is, and it's a lot higher chance than people think. Now, alongside earnings that we get next week, you do have Fed Jerome Powell that gives a speech um, about noon, about 1230 or so. And if he wants to open up that door for a July 31st hike, he could if he wants to. I don't know if he will, but it is a possibility. And uh, overall, that could be a positive catalyst, but I think it's kind of already priced in. We're going to get that cut in September, so I don't know how much of a positive impact that will have. Retail sales will be important. We're expecting 0% month over month. If we do get a negative number or a really bad number, it's going to start throwing around that recession question a lot more. Business inventories will also move the needle for your GDP estimates. We do get a new GD uh, Atlanta Fed GDP Now tracker update for Q2 coming out on Tuesday. Tuesday when we get inventory numbers as well as retail sales. The current estimate is sitting at about 2%. So specifically, Tuesday will be important for GDP. You do have Fed speakers spread throughout this week. Building permits Wednesday, 8.30 in the morning. Um, Fed Beige Book, which I like to read, doesn't move the markets all too much, but I do find it very interesting. If you're a nerd economist like I am, then you may like it as well. We have an ECB interest rate decision next Thursday and the deposit 
the deposit uh, facility rate. We're not expecting anything from the ECB. They're not expected to raise or to cut rates. So we'll see. Philly Fed business conditions, CapEx, employment, new orders, prices paid will be coming out at 830 in the morning on Thursday. Um, bunch more Fed speakers, like I said. And then uh, Friday is actually going to be a pretty slow day. Retail sales out of the UK. Um, PPI data, retail sales out of Canada, but a couple more Fed speakers. So next week, main focus is earnings, Jerome Powell, as well as the economic data. Heading into one of the worst periods of any year, the second half of July, you could start to make an argument that we could be due for a larger pullback, and this could affect Tesla. Now, it may not. We'll have to see. I think Tesla has its own strength, and I think that 230 levels, a good level of support or a floor, if you will, as long as things don't go too bad over the next couple of months, I really don't see Tesla falling under that level, but it is a risk to consider. Longer term, over the next the longer term, put that in quotes because everyone's longer term is different. Mine's 10 years, for an example. But over the shorter midterm, like the next three to six months, I do see a lot more upside from here for Tesla. But could the markets get in the way a little bit of this upside rally that we have seen over the past three weeks or so with Tesla being up uh, in the green? What, 12 out of the last 13 trading days? It's a risk that you need to be mindful of. But all-time highs by the end of this year is a pretty confident bet for me. So let me know what you think about this information down below in the comment section. Hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel. You guys have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.